Hi guys, welcome to Easy Terrain Builds. My name's John, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make shanty buildings. So these buildings I'm going to be using some cardboard boxes. Uh, it doesn't really matter what shape, what size you've got, because um, as you can see here I've got three small ones and I'm just going to glue them all together to create one big building. Make sure the type of cardboard box you're using is at least double walled. You can't use like a cereal box, think single skin. It's just not going to be um, durable enough. Um, I'm playing around with some different shapes here, maybe thinking of an overhang with that top section, or probably not. I'm just going to go for a nice L shape, as you can see here. We're going to be, don't worry about the, um, the gap between the two boxes because we're going to be using cardboard sheets to, um, to skin over the top of that. You could use super glue or PVA glue here to glue the boxes together, but I'm going to use my hot glue gun because I find it's, you know, it's a nice quick, quick fix and it's not expensive to use loads of super glue up. So I'm just going to line the two boxes up as best I can and just give them a quick push together. And that's, that's all done. And then I've got some cardboard panels that this is what we're going to be using to skin over the box. Again, just when you're positioning the top piece, you want to keep it nice and aligned. You don't want too much of an overlap, so I'm just using my little sheet there, and it's all lined up. Next, we're going on to some other materials. I've got some corrugated card here, which is from an old uh, cat food tray. I've got just some cardboard boxes, sheets that I've cut off. we got a delivery. And you're just going to cut those into panels. Only probably you know four by three centimeters, six by three, whatever shape you want. And then I've got some plastic um, corrugated metal sheets here as well, and then some cross stitch plastic sheets as well. These look good when they're uh, painted up rusted. Mostly going to use PVA and then a little bit of super glue in places as well. So cut yourself out some square sheets as I've done here, as you can see from cardboard boxes or the corrugated. Apply a healthy amount of PVA glue and we're just going to start sticking those panels on a little bit randomly to begin with, especially around the bottom. I like to have mainly large uh, squares, it's easier to paint when you get to that process, but you will inevitably leave a few gaps that you'll need to make some smaller panels for. You could use a pair of scissors, but I use a metal ruler and a craft knife to cut the sheets, it's nice and quick and it's a cleaner edge. Just work your way around the building and just make sure you overlap where the two boxes come together. As you can see I've left a few gaps here and there where I'm going to be putting the double diamond checkerboard uh, metal sheets in to give that a nice different effect and here I'm going to be using the super glue as it's plastic onto cardboard PVA will take a lot longer to dry uh, whereas the super glue will just bond that in nice and nice and quick for you. That's great, and just again keep working your way around your building, filling in all the gaps. Make sure you overlap over the where the two boxes connect uh, to give it a little bit more rigidity. Uh, as you're getting up to the roof, you're just making sure you're cutting the boards short enough so they don't overlap when you come to do this roof section here. As you can see, roof's one of the key points. We just I could use more of the metal effect uh, plastic on the top. But you don't have to pay for loads of those sheets if you don't need to. This is relatively cheap, this build. So again, I'm just using the cardboard sheets here, cutting to shape. I'm just, you see, I'm not measuring anything. I'm just uh, cutting from eye, which is a bit quicker. There you go. Glue that on in place when it's ready. PVA is great again. And we're pretty much done. There we go. So now what we want to be doing is moving on to creating some doors. So what I've done is select out one of the big corrugated sheets I've done here, which is horizontal, not vertical, and it's going to be a roller shutter. So what I'm going to take is some balsa wood that I've got lying around, and I'm just going to create a frame around the outside, about the height of the miniature, a little bit higher, as it's a doorway. Um, and I'm going to cut the balsa wood into three pieces, one either side and one on top, and it's just going to literally frame that uh, corrugated sheet so it will look a bit more like a door, and we'll paint it a different colour so it stands out a bit, 
keeps it nice and simple. We don't have to make little doors or buy yourself little doors. This process, yeah, it's cheap and quicker. So just spend a bit of time cutting those balsa wood slats to, to, to length uh, and just, you just PVA glue them in as the balsa sticks to the uh, the cardboard nice and nice and simply. And then we're done. Again, checking the height. And then we're going to move on to the other door on the second floor. So make sure when you are putting your corrugated card on, you do leave a few sections that you can then make into doors later on. Like I've done here. Yep, so I'm pretty happy at this point. You could always add more doors if you want, or if you've got a multi-layered building, even more. Uh, so I'm going to add some ladders now to get access to the different levels. Um, this is keeping it again quite simple, so I want ladders rather than complex staircases. And I'm actually recycling these parts from a previous build I did with the rock stack with the stairs, have you seen those ones? And once you're happy with the height of the ladders you've made, you don't want to be gluing these on quite yet because it actually makes it a lot easier if you glue, um, paint them whole model without these on. So we'll save gluing these on for right at the very end and can paint them separately even. And next we're going to be adding rivets to all the cardboard sheets. Uh, and this represents you know, people hammering and bolting these plates onto the actual terrain. You don't have to do this bit, or if you've even got your own plastic rivets you've bought, or you make yourself, you can use those. But I'm keeping it really simple and just using matchsticks. Just using the saw. I've tried using a pair of scissors to cut the matchsticks, but they all just break apart. So I'm just going to use the saw, go through. It takes a little bit of time. I'm just going to cut four for each panel, one in each corner. And then just a little dab of PVA glue each corner. Easy to use a pair of tweezers here. Otherwise, you're going to get your fingers full of glue if you're trying to do it with your fingers. And just pick each one up, pair of tweezers, and push into place. Keeps it cheap, keeps it nice and simple, and just adds a bit more of an aesthetic to it once the whole thing's been riveted. And here we go. It's a matter of opinion, but I think it looks a bit better with all these rivets in place. I said it's a little bit time consuming, but once it's fully painted, um, it adds a little bit of something more to it. Okay, next we're going to move on to adding some more detail to the piece. We're going to add um, some sort of pipework around it just to give it a little bit more, again, a bit more of an effect. So I've got these PVC pipes bought off eBay as a selection. You can get four different sizes in a big pack and you'll use tons of these in these builds. And what I've got is an old Rhino chassis that I don't use anymore and I want to cut these um, vent pieces off and I'll run the pipes from them. I've got another vehicle accessory like from an old Rhino kit. It's got lots of great little bits like little radar dishes on it and just random little boxes like this little computer box here that I can run wiring out of later on when we get to the wiring. So I've cut the two little vents out and I'm just going to try and work out where I want them to run from to. So probably one there and then one on the side and we're going to run the pipe up around the side of the building into it to the next one. Again, just a little bit of extra details uh, can make your model look really good. So I've got two sizes of pipes here, one fits into the other. So we can use the smallest as the main pipe and we're going to use the bigger pipe to create the joints, 90 degree bends. I find it better to use a thicker pipe to do this rather than the thin pipe itself, um, just because it looks better again. You know, if you look in uh, actual pipe work on buildings, they'll always have a thin pipe running into another one for a joint. So what I'm going to do here is just drill out the top of that little vent to the diameter of the pipe. You have to go quite large, it's quite a wide pipe I'm using. And then yeah, that fits nicely. So that'll look good once it's all in place. And you just want to take a little bit of time to make sure you know exactly where that's going to be to start the pipe work and it's flush to the building. Just use a bit of sandpaper or something to sand the edge of the, uh, the vent down. So now I'm going to work out the approximate, again I'm doing this all pretty much eyeballing, it keeps it nice and quick, approximate height that I want that pipe, the first pipe to be. I just get my little saw, it takes two seconds to cut through it, nice and easy. Yep, yeah, I'm happy that's about at the right height. So next I'm going to take my slightly thicker pipe that that pipe's going to feed through 
and very carefully take a lighter and just give it a couple of seconds and melt the end about sort of a centimeter, two centimeters from the very end and you get that nice 90 degree, it will cool very quickly. Just mind your fingers, seek an adult's help if you need to. Uh, and then we're just going to cut again, probably about a centimetre down from the bend, um, which is where the smaller pipe's going to feed in through. And there you go, that's a nice snug connection. Little dab of super glue really holds it in place as well. Now again, I'm just going to line this up, and it'll give me an idea of where the next pipe and how long I've got to cut that to fit in place. So just work your way around the model, doing the exact same process, cutting the lengths, gluing them in place, 90 degree bends on the the wider bits that the tube's going to fit in through and you'll see it's it's quite a simple process actually once you get the hang of it you don't need to glue everything in place as you go along either you can actually make most of the structure glue it all at the end and here we go so not too complex two vents one pipe running from either or two the other one and you could add more in there if you wanted make it as complicated as you want really it's quite a simple process so the next stage we're moving on to is putting some wiring effects in, keeping it again nice and simple. All I'm going to do here is uh, put one of these little boxes on the roof and then run two cables from that box along the roof, down the side, and then to another box next to the door at the bottom, and then the other one is going to run to a searchlight. So I'm going to super glue these in place to begin with, and then I'm going to add some um, sort of bolts or rivets to keep them in, look like they're keeping them in place at the end uh, and I'll show you how to do that. And it's just going to be using a small drill again to drill into those into the little electric box uh, only big enough for the wires or then push straight into them. And here we go, first wire's gone in that's a nice flush fit and then I'm going to drill a second hole for the black wire to go into. Plenty of super glue um, on that and then find your slot on top of the roof and just firmly press those down. Once those, the box and the starting of the wire is glued down, it's just a process of going along the wires, adding more glue where you want it stuck in place and just letting that dry naturally. And then repeat with the black wire. So I've got down to the part here where I'm going to split the wires off uh, and then I've got my second little electronic box so I'm going to just going to give it an, an estimate, clip the wire off to where it's going to go feed into the bottom of that box and again I've drilled a little hole in that I could do at the top and the cable fits nicely to it and I'm just going to glue that on the side and it's going to look like a little control panel just again to give a little bit of, a deta bit of detail, clip a bit more of the wire off and glue that on. And once that's in place, I'm going to move on to the little searchlight that I'm going to place just above the door. Again, a bit of character. Again, it came off the vehicle sprue, so it's nice and easy to use some of these spare parts that you've got lying around in your big box. So I've cut the bottom of the light so it'll fit into my one of my little PVC tubes. And then again, I'm going to melt that into a 90 degree bend and then run the cable directly into that. I think it looks a lot better when all your cables run into... Uh, into the actual um, boxes and the tubes rather than just sort of sitting flush to them just gives it that sort of slightly more realistic look okay bend that in place just gonna saw that off again into the right length just again about a few a few mil and the cable is gonna run nicely into that and then we're gonna end up with that effect which I'm very happy with Okay, then we can move on to the top uh, on the roof. I want it to look like there's some metal uh, little plates holding those wires in place. So I'm just going to take some thin cardboard, so like a cereal packet, anything like that, and I'm going to cut it about 10 mil wide into a strip. And then all I'm going to do is really simple here, just put it in place, just bend it around those wires, and the card will have that little memory bend. So really wedge that in there, and you can see it's got that little bend in it now. And I'm just going to cut the ends off, leave enough of a tab to be able to glue down onto the roof. 
probably again a few mil on either side that's going to sit nicely and I'm just going to use a touch of super glue across the wires and hold that in place it takes real seconds to do actually uh, looks really good especially when it's painted so I'm going to carry on with that process and get them all glued into place and I'm going to put a couple on the vertical cables as they're coming down again just before they split off that's happy with that it's looking really good okay moving on to the next stage we want to put some railings you don't have to but I want to put some railings around that first floor uh, just to give the model something to hide behind give them a little bit of cover you could leave this you know, blank if you really want to and you put your own sporadic um, scenery in places like scatter scenery but for me I'm going to take the slightly thicker PVC tubes I've got and these are going to be almost look like scaffolding uh, along the line of the, the walkway there and down the other side and I'm going to then glue the thinner PVC tube uh, horizontally to be the, uh, the struts and then we'll later on I'll show you what else I add to those to make it look even, even more realistic to give it a little bit even more cover. Again I want to make sure there's space for my ladder so they're not walking straight up into a set of railings. So I'm going to put that in place and then I'm going to start gluing down my thicker vertical tubes. So you don't have to worry too much about measuring those as long as you've um, when you put the vertical and the horizontal bars on, they're lower than the height of your models, so they can look over, rest weapons over the top. That's all you're really looking for. Again, I'm going to keep my ladder in place just so I can <laughs> give me a bit of reference of where I can put my gap for the railings. Um, and I'm going to put one more in the centre there, and then another three down the right hand side of the walkway. And then again that's a very easy method of just making sure you've got a model on in place so you can get the height of that uh, horizontal bar at the right height and the right length. Again I'm just going to wing this from my eyeball, get the approximate length and just saw that, saw that off. A couple of dabs of super glue, yeah about there I'm pretty happy with. And I'm going to put two along this section. So one there and then one below it. And again, yeah, just work my way along. And there we go. Just take your time, cut the lengths that you need, glue them in place, um, and just make sure you've, you do leave those gaps for the stairs to go up and everything's pretty stable. And as I said, we're going to add more uh, sections in a little bit later to give even a bit more cover because it's quite open at the moment. Next we're going to move on to the painting stage, so I've just taken matte black spray from Halfords, again nice and cheap, and just gone round and sprayed the whole thing, gave it two layers just to make sure I didn't miss any sections, uh, and it's given us that nice undercoat. Then I've got the three main colours I use, Mephisto and Red, uh, Wah, Green, and then Administratum Grey. Again, you can use whatever colours you want for this, but this is just what I find has worked well for me in the past. Gives me the sort of the aesthetic look I'm I'm after. It's a nice bright red, but it, it looks really good when you're rusting it as well, like a silver rust effect to look like all the paint's chipping off. And I'm just going to go along all the panels that I want red. I'm just going to pick these out at random, really. You don't want too many red in a row. Again, you don't want too many green all clumped together. So it's going to look quite sporadic, uh, and you can see the effect as I go along. One coat as well for the red and the green. They're actually quite thick pigments, uh, and you, I wouldn't even worry if you do have a little bit of the darker black underneath coming through, because when we add the rust effects, you're really not going to see that. The red looks nice and bright here, but uh, don't worry, it will, it will darken down once we do put that rust on. Again, here's the next panel I've chosen. It is still connected to that red one, but there's a couple above it that I can paint green and grey to break up the... It's not too much all in the same place. Don't worry about the um, the bolts as well, that, uh, the rivets. 
you can paint over the top of those and when we can do the rust effect you can pick those out just dry brush them silver and there's the red quite happy with that uh, again you can see I've randomized the panels to leave some gaps for the greens and the grey and then I'm going to go on to the green stage again pick a panel at random so I've left a corrugated panel above that that's going to be grey and then the one above that I might go green again and then you've also got the metal plates as well using the, the um, double diamond plastic boards so we'll be dry brushing those later on we're not going to colour those in because it's it'll look good to have some random metal plates on as well so there's the green all done quite happy with that and then that's going to move us on to the last colour, the grey and this is where you are going to notice that you're going to need to put two layers with the grey because it is a little bit of a thinner pigment which isn't the end of the world so again all the panels that are left that aren't the plastic metal plates that we've added in are going to go grey yeah I wouldn't worry too much about the um, the bolts just paint over the top of them and in the end you should end up with this and feel free to use any other colours you want to add to this you could have used some dark oranges or some yellows that will rest, rust up nicely thinner pigments it's harder to paint but uh, it's, it's dealer's choice really then what I'm going to do is move on to do all the metal panels we've left using uh, a basic rust effect dry brushing so Riza rust orange and then the like a bolt gun metal or another type of metal a touch of either mix them together on a palette and then just brush off the excess paint and go go crazy go dry brushing around the model nice simple process doesn't have to be too thick on uh, and then we'll end up looking like this and it's looking pretty good and I've also added the blue on the doors as well might have missed that part so next what I want to do is pick out um, the metal plates with typhus corrosion which is like a sort of sandy texture paint it adds a little bit more texture uh, to the panels so when we come to dry brush the rust effect on the panels it's got something a little bit more to grip onto and I'm just going to take a, a medium brush and just go around the model dolloping it, it's better use thicker dolloping this on in patches where I think rust might have uh, impacted on the panels it's quite a fun process just pick out panels especially the grey the more rust you have on the grey because it's quite a clean colour the better it will look to break that up shows up quite nicely on the red shows up really well on the green so green and grey panels is where this looks best so really focus on those work your way around the model and then we'll go on to the next stage so the whole model is now done with the typhus corrosion um, and what I want to do is add on some extra panels to the railings just to give a bit more cover to the model so I've cut up six different lengths of the corrugated card and these are going to be glued on randomly in places just to give that extra bit of cover you, know, you can have a little play around where you think it will be best to put these on the inside or the outside of the railings and I'm going to go for a mixture of the three colours we've used again red, green and grey two panels in red, two panels in green and two in grey and then I'm going to go through exactly the same process using that typhus corrosion just to add rust spots onto the onto the plating it gives it that nice effect both on the front and the back because you're going to be able to see these panels from you know, both aspects and then we're going to move on to actually rusting the type of corrosion splotches that we've pulled over the model and that's using the riser rust dry brushing just gently onto those areas try to keep especially on the grey just to those rust patches otherwise it would just look like orange slodges on the grey so just gently going around dry brushing all over the model and those panels and it should end up looking like this so I've managed to do the whole model now, all the metal plates, even the doors, the roller shutter doors um, and I've done the actual individual plates that glue onto the railings as well 
But there's one more effect that I want to add, which is the metal dry brushing on all the plates. So this looks great for paint chipping away, especially on the corrugated boards. You can see here, add quite a lot of this on. You don't have to go spare with it. Just around the edges of the metal plates where they join together, where you think paint chipping might have occurred. And I'm just going to work my way around all the different panels until it looks like this. And it's, it's looking a lot better now. You've got the metal and the rust as effect as well. And it, it, it works, works nicely together. So I've done these little boards, so I'm now going to start gluing them to the railings. And you can have a think about practically where you want the cover to be. You know, if you want a lot of line of sight, no no cover at all, just use a couple of these plates. But I'm going to use I use quite a bit because in my games you you get a lot of uh, shots from sideways and above, so the more cover the better, really. So I'm not going to put two red panels next to each other because that'll look a bit too much. So I'm going to put plenty of super glue on for this. Again, you're gluing cardboard to plastic, so PVA would be okay, but to be quicker, I use super glue. This panel I'm going to go on the inside, just something a bit different. I've got a bigger green panel there, so about in the central center. I'm going to stick that. A little bit of a gap between panels. You could put a bit of an overlap if you wanted to, but I want some some gaps so there is a chance to you know shoot shoot someone on the inside there and then the last grey panel on the end where the stairs would go up steps would go up next to that orientate it whichever way around you want and then just glue that in place yep I'm quite happy with that two more panels so I'm going to put the grey one on this section give a little bit more cover down this end again some nice gaps between the panels for those line of sight shots and then on the very end so there is a little bit of cover down that walkway side on this side I'm going to put the green panel as you would uh, as the guy comes to get up his uh, ladder he's got a little bit of cover to protect him you know if you need to wait at the bottom of that ladder to go up you at least have got a little bit of cover because you're going to be exposed possibly on the roof so Again, it's, it's good fun just working out where you want to put these pieces. And there we go, and I've chucked some models on there just to give you the line of sight. So down that direction you can be shot, but the other directions you know, you've got some cover. Finally, I'm going to be putting my ladders in. This ladder is a little bit tricky because I've put a pipe along that section. So I'm going to use these two little spaces just to push the ladder away from the wall. So it's got something to glue onto. And there we go with the ladders on as well. So almost done, but uh, it's looking it's looking pretty good, and I'm happy with that. And then we're going to move on to the next stage, which is adding posters. And I love putting these Necromunda posters on or you know, Imperial posters on. It just gives you the opportunity to add a little bit more color, a bit more personalization to your models. So I've cut out a load here that I've had. I printed out myself just on a printer. I'll show you how to do that a little bit later on. And there we go, we've got a lot of Imperial posters on, zombie posters, Imperial posters, Gene Steeler cult posters, strip club posters, wanted posters. As many as you can, almost without going too far, but it just really gives you that extra character. So still got the cables to do, so I've left those to last. And I'm gonna use Moot Green and bale or brown as my colours but it's up to you you could use different red and black blues but I think uh, green and yellow stand out quite nicely so they're now done just use the very fine paintbrush to make sure you don't uh, get any paint on the other parts of the model but you can always touch those up as necessary and as they are quite bright I'm just going to use some Agrax Earth shade just to put on top just to shade them down mute them down a little bit because you don't want them looking too clean and tidy. And here we have the completed model. Posters, rust effects, all in all. So I'm, I'm very happy with this piece. Uh, it's quite a basic shape of model to start off with. I'd always give you know something like this a go first. Uh, and at the same time, I also built another model, 
something a little bit more uh, ambitious. As you can see here, it's three tiered and I've added some posters, some billboards at the top. So I'm going to quickly show you how to make those billboards because I think those add something to the game. So I've got posters and billboards here that I've printed out on um, parcel sheets. So they, you peel the back off and they stick down. And then 2 mil MDF boards I've cut out which are approximately the, uh, the dimension of that billboard. And I'm then going to use two of the PVC pipes um, to glue onto the back and then those will eventually glue onto the side of the building. Uh, it's a very simple process of spray painting the billboard back in the MDF. Give it a little bit of a dry brush now. Do all the painting first before you actually stick on the the design. Otherwise you might make the mistake of painting onto the design itself. And then I'm just going to cut it out again with my metal ruler and craft knife. Always make the design slightly bigger than your MDF backing board because then you've got a bit of leeway when you stick it onto the back and you can then cut around it which I'll show you here in a second. These are designs I've made myself, I just Google, Googled the images and then just added some text to it that's relevant to the, the aesthetic that I'm setting this in. So it's some sort of strip club or some sort of fantasy in the far future. So I've got a little bit of leeway around the edge of this and I'm going to stick the board about in the middle and then just take my craft knife uh, and cut the edges off around it. Again, be careful of using a knife. It's a little bit sticky, those sticky bits, because I've already peeled it off. Just take a bit of patience, cutting around the edge. Cut the last little bit off, and there we go. That's looking quite good on the side of the building. And then I will add another one on the side as well. And then on the back of that, you know, someone's gone across and uh, chucked some more posters on the back of it just to get, break it up a little bit more from the grey. And there we go guys, here's the end result. Very happy with the way this has turned out. Gives it some colour but also that rustic effect of a shanty town. So this would fit into a Necromunda, a 40k scenery. There's the bigger piece I've done as well. Again more posters. I've gone for the three tiers on this one. You can see the blue door at the front of the roller shutter. And I've got a bit of an overhang and there's two billboards I've added on the top a gun one and some sort of strip club one and you can make these buildings any shape size you want using this technique you know bigger the better more variety uh, and they look they look pretty good together you know you can orientate them around you could put maybe some ladders in between them chuck a load of models on them here I've got the Escher and the Vansar not much cover at the top there, but the billboards will add some. You can chuck some scatter terrain down. And it gives them a little firing position there. And then the vans are on the other one, shooting across. Again, you can print out whatever posters you want to make it look good. And uh, cheers for watching, guys. Thanks again for making your way all the way through this one. Uh, and if you've got a second, join the uh, Facebook group the easy train builds over on Facebook, uh, like the video, give us a comment, see if you've got one if you've built it yourself, and subscribe for more videos. Cheers guys, see you in the next one.